Hello dear students, welcome back to the English class. This is Farzana Shamim, lecturer in English. Today we are going to do the next half of the story, The Gold Frame, written by R.K. Lakshman, taken from your English textbook, Rainbow of English, Section C, Chapter 4. A Padho Punjab, Padha Punjab, Project English. I hope you have gone through the first part of the story that we did in the previous class. Come on, let's recapitulate. I have a few questions for you. Let me see how much you remember. Let's recapitulate. Answer the following questions. Who was Datta? Whose portrait did the customer want to get framed? What price did Datta charge for the frame? What kind of frame did the customer select for his grandfather's portrait? Was the customer punctual or unpunctual? What was Datta's reaction? Let's see the answers. Who was Datta? Datta was a photo frame maker. Whose portrait did the customer want to get framed? The customer wanted to get his grandfather's portrait framed. What kind of frame did the customer select for his grandfather's portrait? The customer selected an oval cut mount frame for his grandfather's portrait. What price did Datta charge for the frame? Datta charged 17 rupees for the frame. Was the customer punctual or unpunctual? The customer was punctual. He came four days in advance to collect the frame. What was Datta's reaction? Datta ignored the customer completely so that the customer was embarrassed. Dear students, Let's learn some new words. As you know, these words will make the story interesting and understandable. I'll speak out each word twice. Please repeat after me so that you get the exact pronunciation. Let's get started. The first word, precise, precise, clear and accurate. The captain gave precise instructions to his team members. Transfixed. Transfixed. To become motionless. Kids are easily transfixed by cartoon movies. You see when the kids are made to sit in front of the TV to watch cartoons, they become motionless. They sit still. Next word. Avert. Avert means prevent. Social distancing can avert the spread of COVID-19. Mutilated. Mutilated means damaged severely. Henry's pet dog has mutilated his new shoes. Next word, nightmarish. Nightmarish means frightening. He narrated nightmarish stories about ghosts. Adorn. Adorn means decorate. Shama adorned her room with beautiful paintings. Jauntily. Jauntily, in a happy and confident way. Gifty walked home jauntily after receiving the award. Ramized, ramized, surged. She ramized through a purse for a pen. Resplendent, resplendent, attractive and impressive. The little girl looked resplendent in her pink frock. Glittering. Glittering means 
shining. I found some glittering stones in my garden. Benevolent. Benevolent. Kind and helpful. Sonu Sooth, who helped the migrant laborers, is a benevolent person. Hoax. Hoax. An act intended to make somebody believe something that is not true. The invitation letter turned out to be a hoax. Let's do some pre-reading activity. To recapitulate the words, to revise the words we have done just now. Match the words in column A with the meanings in column B. Adorn, benevolent, resplendent, glittering, jauntily. In column B we have in a happy and confident way, shining, kind and helpful, decorate, attractive and impressive. Let's do adorn, benevolent, resplendent, glittering, jauntily. Let's see the answers. Adorn, decorate, benevolent, kind and helpful, resplendent, attractive and impressive, glittering, shining, jauntily in a happy and confident way. Let's do the second half, the next half of the story. Datta merely nodded without shifting attention from a tiny nail which he with precise rhythmic strokes was driving into a frame but sensed the man's obsessive attachment to it. He told himself there would be trouble if he did not deliver the order on the promised date. Next morning, he made that his first job keeping aside all the others. The photograph was lying on a shelf among many others. He took it and carefully kept it on a wooden plank on the floor. Then he looked for the pencil stub for marking the measurements. As usual, it was missing. He swept his hand all round him impatiently, scattering fragments of glass and wood. So, the customer had arrived four days in advance to inquire whether the portrait was ready. Datta could make out that the customer had a powerful attachment to the photograph. So, the next morning he sat down to frame the portrait. As usual, he could not find the pencil and started looking for it. False shapes that he mistook for the pencil, harassed him on end and stoked his anger. Frustrated in all his attempts to find it, he finally stood up to shake the folds of his dhoti, an ultimate move which generally yielded results. But he shook the folds so violently that he upset a tin containing white enamel paint and it landed right on the sacred photograph of the old man, emptying its thick, slimy contents on it. Datta stood transfixed and stared at the disaster at his feet as if he had suddenly lost all faculty of movement. He could not bring himself even to avert his eyes from the horror which he seemed to be cruelly forced to view. Then his spectacles clouded with perspiration and helpfully screened his vision. Unable to find the pencil, Datta started shaking his dhoti vigorously, as he usually did when he lost something. 
Oh my gosh, what happened? A tin containing white enamel paint emptied on the photograph. He was so scared that he seemed to lose all strength and simply stared at the damage that was caused. When at last he fully recovered his senses, he set about rescuing the picture in such a desperate hurry that he made a worse mess of it. He rubbed the picture so hard with a cloth that he peeled off thin strips of filmy coating from its surface. Before he realized what he had done, half the old man's face and nearly all of his turban were gone. Datta helplessly looked at the venerable elder transformed into thick black sticking to the enamel smeared on the rag in his hand. He sat with both hands clutching his head. Every nerve in his head throbbed as if it would tear itself apart if he did not hold it down. Anyways, Datta controlled himself and tried to save the picture. He rubbed it so hard with a piece of cloth that the old man's face could not be seen. He was very much disappointed and could not understand what to do. What answer was he going to offer to the customer who had a fanatic devotion to the photograph he had just mutilated beyond recovery. His imagination ran wild, suggesting nightmarish consequences to his own dear self and to the fragile, inflammable shop. He racked his brain for a long, while still sheer exhaustion calmed his agitated nerves and made him accept the situation with a hopeless resignation. Meanwhile, the plethora of gods saints and images gazed down at him from the walls with a transcendental smile and seemed to offer themselves to him to pray. With a fervent appeal in his heart, he stared at them. So Datta could not understand what answer he would give to the customer, who had a powerful attachment to the portrait. He racked his brain for a solution. The gods in the pictures on the walls seemed to tell him that he should pray to the Almighty to save him. In a state of mind, it did not register for quite a while that a particular photograph of a person on the wall had held his attention rather more than it was qualified to do. It was an ordinary portrait of a middle-aged man in a dark suit and striped tie resting his right arm jauntily on a studio prop made to look like a fluted Roman pillar. Datta was amazed to see a faint likeness to the late lamented old man. The more he gazed at the face, the more convincing it appeared to him. But he dismissed the odd resemblance he saw as one of those tricks of a thoroughly fagged out mind. All the same, at the back of his mind, he had an idea that began to take shape. He saw the possibility of finding an acceptable substitute. Suddenly, a photograph of a person hanging on the wall caught his attention. The more he looked at it, the more it seemed to resemble the customer's grandfather's portrait. An idea struck his mind. So, what did he do? He made up his mind to find a photograph that would substitute for the old man's photograph. He brought down the old wooden box in which he had kept all the photographs unclaimed over the years. As he rummaged in it, panicky cockroaches and spiders scared helter-skelter all over the floor. Unmindful of them, Datta anxiously searched for the brownish photographs of the old man's vintage. Soon there was a pile before him. He was surprised he could pick up so many which qualified to take the old man's place. But he had to reject a lot of them. 
luckily there was one with which Datta felt he could take a fair risk. The print had yellowed a bit noticeably, but he calculated that the total effect when put in a dazzling gold frame would render it safe. So, Datta looked at the photographs lying in a wooden box. Luckily, he found a faded photograph that almost looked like the old man. He decided to take the risk, thinking that the picture having yellowed when framed in a shiny golden frame might fool the customer and it would go unnoticed. After a couple of hours concentrated work, he sat back and proudly surveyed the old man's double looking resplendent in his gold frame. He was very pleased. He even became bold enough to challenge the customer if his faking was discovered. Look, my dear man, he would say, I don't know who has been fooling you. That's the picture you brought here for framing. Take it or throw it away. The days that followed were filled with suspense and anxiety. Datta feared that the customer would surprise him at an unguarded moment, making him bungle the entire carefully thought out plot. But the man turned up promptly a couple of days later. Datta was bent over a piece of work and slightly stiffened as he heard the voice shrill with expectation ask, is it ready? After working for two hours, he looked proudly at the picture that looked impressive in the gold frame. He decided to face the customer boldly in case his faking was revealed and tell him that he had framed the picture given to him. He could take it or leave it. But the days that followed were filled with anxiety, fear and suspense. He was scared that he himself might spoil his own plan because of his nervousness. Anyways, the man did arrive after two days for the frame photograph. And he wanted to know if it was ready. Datta's heart began to race and to compose himself, he let a whole minute pass without answering. Then he reached out to take the neatly wrapped package in a corner. Ah, it's ready, the customer exclaimed. At the same time, mumbling flattering tributes to Datta for his promptness and so on. He spread his arms widely with dramatic exuberance to receive the photograph as if it was actually a long lost person he was greeting. But Datta took his time removing the wrapper from the frame. The customer waited impatiently, filling in the time, showering more praise on his worshipful master who was to adorn the wall of his home. Datta finally revealed the glittering frame and held it towards him. The customer seemed visibly struck by its grandeur. Datta's heart began to beat faster. He was very nervous. He slowly unwrapped the package and handed over the framed photograph to the customer. The customer was impressed by the beauty of the frame. He even praised Datta for his promptness. And he received the package in a very dramatic manner as if he was receiving, he was greeting a long lost person. Datta held his breath and watched the man's expression. With every second that passed, he was losing his nerve and thought that in another moment, he would betray the big hoax he had played. Suddenly, he saw the customer straighten. The reverential look and benevolent expression vanished from his face. What have you done? 
he demanded indignantly. For Datta, the moment seemed familiar, for he had already gone through it a thousand times, night and day, since he had splashed the white paint on the original photograph. Several times he had rehearsed his piece precisely for, the, for this occasion. But before he could open his mouth, the customer shouted with tremendous authority in his bearing, Now, don't deny it. I clearly remember asking for a cut mount with an oval shape. This is square. Look! Datta was scared and nervous. He was scared that his faking might be caught by the customer. Suddenly, the customer told him sternly that he had committed a blunder. Datta felt that he was caught. Anyways, he had been expecting this situation and was ready with the answer that he had been practicing all these days. But before he could say anything, much to his relief, the customer just complained that he remembered having ordered for an oval cut, oval cut mount and not a square one. Well, dear students, this is the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. Now coming to the point, you remember what I had asked you in the previous class? I had asked you to frame a story using four pictures. Now judge for yourself how close your story was to the story that we have read. Okay? Now let's revise and recapitulate the story. Post reading activity 1. Choose the correct option. Dash spoiled the photograph. Silver fish, glue, white enamel paint, raisin. Who is the late lamented old man? The customer, Datta, the customer's grandfather, none of them. Datta succeeded in fooling the customer. True, false, not given in the story. With a fervent appeal in his heart, he stared at them. Which of the following words can be used in the place of fervent? Apathetic, sincere, insincere, indifferent. The customer had selected A or an dash frame for his grandfather's portrait. Plain mount, oval cut mount, square cut mount, circular. Let's see the answers. White enamel paint spoiled the photograph. Who is the late lamented old man? The customer's grandfather. Datta succeeded in fooling the customer. True. The word sincere can be used in the place of fervent. The customer had selected an oval cut mount frame for his grandfather's portrait. Here is another activity for you. Replace the bold underlined words with words from the given box. Reverential, adorned, benevolent, glittering, grandeur. The kind old lady decorated her living room with colored balloons and shining streamers. The splendor of the room delighted the kids. Casting a respectful look at Aunt Alisa, Gifty ran towards her and hugged her. Thank you, Aunt Alisa. You made my day. Gifty was an orphan. Aunt Alisa had organized a birthday party for Gifty and the other kids from the orphanage. Happiness lies in sharing and caring. Come on, do it. Kind, decorated, shining, splendor, respectful. Let's see the answers. The benevolent old lady adorned her living room with colored balloons and glittering streamers. The grandeur of the room delighted the kids. Casting a reverential look at Aunt Alisa, Gifty ran towards her and hugged her. Thank you, Aunt Alisa. You made my day. 
Gifty was an orphan and Elisa had organized a birthday party for Gifty and the other kids from the orphanage. Happiness lies in sharing and caring. Now it's time for home assignment. Answer the following question in 50 to 60 words. The question is, assuming that you are tech savvy, what would have you done had you been in Datta's place? Suppose you have a very good knowledge about computer and internet. What would have you done had you been in Datta's place? Before we call it a day, before we wind up, let's discuss what message R.K. Lakshman wants to give to the readers through this story. Actually, he wants to reflect the false attitude, the false prestige and hypocrisy of the modern people. See, in the beginning, Datta was portrayed as a very simple, honest and hardworking man, though he was rude and callous. As the story unfolds, we find that his honesty vanishes amidst his fear and anxiety. But dear students, you must remember that you should always be bold and own up your mistakes honestly. Because one lie leads to another lie. So you should always be honest sincere and upright in your dealings. This is what R.K. Lakshman wants to convey to all his readers. That's all for the day from your presenter, Frizana Shamim, lecturer in English, Government Senior Secondary School, Chandbaja, Faridkot. This is an initiative by Department of School Education, Punjab. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.